So we can begin. Or you want to wait a couple of minutes? Yes, Maharaj, I think there are two minutes to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, two minutes to go. Yeah. Now it's a Bhishma Panchak, tomorrow is the last day. We will finish on the last day of the Bhishma Panchak. And I will finish also my five days. Maharaj, can I ask you a question regarding this Bhishma Panchak? Yes. Maharaj, tomorrow is also a lunar eclipse. I don't know if it is visible in India. If it is a lunar eclipse at the time of breaking fast, how do we break the fast, Maharaj? What time is the lunar eclipse? I don't know. If at all, assuming if it is at the break, fast breaking time, I mean during the moon uh, rise, if it is a lunar eclipse, how do we break the fast? Well, depends how you've been fasting. What have you been taking for the for, for four days? If you, are, if you are on Panchagavya, how do we break the fast? You've been doing Panchagavya? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So you should have a, you should have a feast. <laughs> But usually what they tell is during the eclipse you should have four hours before uh, the eclipse time. Uh, that is what uh, we have heard because it doesn't digest properly during the eclipse time. Yeah, you don't eat during the eclipse time. Yeah. We're not supposed to do eat, eat or drink even during the eclipse. Mm. We're supposed to chant the holy name. But, well, they. They were, they were inviting me just now, they told me, they said they're going to have a, a program at 5.30 in Mayapur, they're breaking fast. I told them, I said, well, I'm giving class, I said, I can't come. So much. Otherwise, we discuss with devotees, we can make our class tomorrow early, because all of us, maybe most of us need to break fast. Really? Well, you have to ask, we have to ask the devotees who is in charge for the class. Uh, Maharas? No, Maharas, it is Ra Radhika Nagarpur. Oh, Radhika Nagarpur. He's yeah. the coordinator. Yeah, it's a <clears throat> bit difficult to start changing the time. I don't know. I think 6.30 is okay. You can break fast then. You know, you don't have to worry about any special time breaking fast. There's not like a prayana, it's not like a codice prana where you have a special time to break the fast. As far Thank as you, Guru Maharaj. I also just noticed that uh, tomorrow's lunar eclipse is starting from 12.48 p.m. and end at 4.17 p.m. Is that so in India? In India. So that doesn't interfere with our breaking fast. We can eat and drink. Yes, yes, that's good. Good night. That's okay. But we're not supposed to eat and drink when there's an eclipse going on. No, no, I'm just finishing. Huh? Oh, finished. Four after, finished. After Surya Asta, we take. Okay, are you also doing Panchagavya fasting? Yes. No, it's not Panchagavya. Fruits. What are you taking? Fruit and roots? Fruits, only fruits. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm also taking only fruits. So what, we have to take fruits before what? Before 12 something? In, anyhow in the morning we take breakfast. Well, you just take... And in, then, then, then in the night. I heard from Dhyapatakamad, he said tomorrow no need to take lunch. We take yeah. breakfast and then take uh, the break, break fasting feast. Oh, okay. That's what usually happens. Really? Okay, so tomorrow I won't take any lunch. I, I, I won't take my fruit at lunchtime. Just take in the morning. Maybe take a late breakfast. That's better. Take a brunch. <laughs> Maharaj? Yes. 
Hare Krishna. Uh, tomorrow is also the last day of uh, uh, Chatur Masya Vratana Maharaj. Yes, right. Okay. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, we can start. Okay. If you wish. Om Agyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya. Recording in progress. Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschachadisarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All right, we'd like to begin inviting someone to tell us something we spoke about yesterday. Can I ask? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, yesterday we discussed about uh, chapter 5. The chapter name was uh, Nanda Maharaj, uh, uh, meeting of Nanda Maharaj and uh, Vasudeva. Uh, Nanda Maharaj was very jubilant because uh, baby Krishna was born, Lord Krishna was born. And um, uh, the, not only Nanda Maharaj, the whole Vrindavan uh, was in jubilation. Then uh, Nanda Maharaj uh, gave two million cows in charity to the Brahmanas. And uh, also Nanda Maharaj performed Jata Karma ceremony. Then on this occasion also Nanda Maharaj uh, gave a lot of charities to the, all the people who were present uh, in, the, in the ceremony. And uh, hearing the news of uh, Nanda Maharaj, uh, you know, and Yashoda got a uh, baby. So all the Rajivasis, they dress nicely and uh, then uh, they, they proceed to Nanda Maharaj to see the baby. Uh, and uh, then Prabhupada in the purport mentions uh, how the Rajivasi women are, you know, naturally very, very beautiful without any artificial cosmetics. And also they all blessed uh, uh, Krishna, uh, may you become king of Raja. Mm, okay, very good. Okay. Thank you very okay, much. After this, Maharaj, uh, Nanda Maharaj uh, uh, proceed to Mathura to pay the tax to Kamsa. There he meets uh, Vasudeva, and uh, there was a discussion between Vasudeva and uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj. And also, we, we talked about how they are the brothers, you know, like uh, Vasudeva's father, uh, uh, Shurasena, had two wives, one Kshatriya wife from Vasudeva was born and from Vaishya wife uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj was born and uh, they discuss each other and also Maharaj clearly explained you know when uh, two people meet they discuss about their uh, I know their profession like two now in this case Vasudeva is inquiring from Nanda Maharaj about how is uh, Krushi, Goraksha and Vanitya and also he explained if two Kshatriya meets, uh, they talks about the Praja and what is the collection of the taxes, then uh, wars, so on and so things. And similarly, when Brahmanas meet, they discuss about their devotional service. Okay. And then finally, and, uh, Vasudeva uh, advises uh, Nanda Maharaj to leave uh, Mathura immediately. Then he proceeds to uh, okay. Gokula. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Very nice. Anybody else would like to add anything? Might be a bit difficult. <laughs> but anyone? Yes, Prabhu? <clears throat> Marat, we were also discussing who should offer obeisances to who. Yes. Right. When Nan and Vasudev met. Uh, but actually, none of them offer, offered obeisances. Nanda Maharaj was so overwhelmed with Prema that he just embraced Vasudev. Yes, right. Although Vasudev is higher caste, 
but Vasud, but Nanda Maharaj is older, but they have an intimate relationship. They're friends and stepbrothers. Okay, thank you very much. So we hear, we heard at the end of the chapter how Vasudev told Nanda Maharaj that you should really get back to Gokul. Now Vasudev would certainly be worried because those two boys, the two children there, are actually his children. Or well, at least Vasudev think, thinks they're his children. And he, he's very worried for their protection because he knows about Kamsa and how Kamsa was engaged in so many atrocities and he had his lieutenants, his ministers, and there was Pralamba and Keshi and we're going to hear today about this also formidable uh, lieutenant of Kamsa, Putana. <laughs> So, uh, Nan, uh, Vasudev tells Nanda Maharaj that you should, go, you should get back to Vrindavan quickly. And Vasudev said, I'm worried that something dangerous may happen there and you should be there to take care of the situation. So Nanda Maharaj, hearing these words from Vasudev, he's very affected because he sees Vasudev not just as his brother or friend, but he sees him also as a, like a, a Rajarishi. He sees him like a Rajarishi, a saintly king. Well, he's a Kshatriya. Vasudev is a Kshatriya, so the Kshatriyas are all like Rajas. So he was, uh, and he was a Rishi also. And so Rajarishis, they don't lie. They speak the truth. And Nanda Maharaj understood that, you know, this is something, this is a warning. And he, he, he saw this as uh, like a warning coming from Krishna. So Nanda Maharaj became very determined, very serious, and immediately packed up everything, and he got the, the bullocks oh, yoked uh, up to the cart, and they set off to get back to Goku at full speed. So, this is uh, how the, the chapter begins with Nanda Maharaj uh, being anxious to get back to Goku, to see the situation. Uh, the, the first verse actually talks about when there's a dangerous situation, when there's any kind of danger or problems at all, a devotee will immediately take shelter of the Supreme Lord. We'll take shelter when we're in a dangerous condition. We'll all take shelter of the Holy Name. We will want to take the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. We, we have no other shelter when there's danger. And we see the examples of all the great devotees, how, how they're, whenever you know, they're, of course, they always think of Krishna, but when there's a dangerous situation, then their Krishna consciousness will be even greater. Do you have any experiences of that? Have you seen that? I, I heard that one time in, in Mumbai, there was an earthquake, and all the devotees came rushing out of the building, and they were all worried the building's going to fall down, the ground's going to open up, and they were chanting like anything. And they said it was the best rounds they ever did. So I was wondering, did, did any of you have any experiences like that, where you were in a dangerous situation and you just took shelter of the Holy Name and you were able to overcome all the difficulties? Maharaj, can I share one of the experience I had? Oh, please do, Mataji, yes. Um, Maharaj, two, three years back, I was actually diagnosed with a very uh, uh, severe illness. And uh, actually, when I was diagnosed, I just, on the way back, I was thinking, you know, 
I shouldn't be doing the chanting or anything because I was totally upset. But when I returned back home, I offered my obeisances to my deities. And immediately, like some inner voice was telling me that, I heard my Guru Maharaj telling me that everything will be all right if you chant the holy name of the Lord. But down the lane after two years, I now I am totally recovered from that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. So you never stopped chanting the holy name. You took and you, you increased your chanting, yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Very nice. Anybody else would like to give us some of the, uh, an experience they had when they were in danger or difficulty and they were able to take more shelter of Krishna? I have these opportunity. I often had it because, you know, when we do things like Sankirtan, and sometimes, you know, you get, you get trouble from people, at the authorities, sometimes they don't like it, that you're doing book distribution and collecting and things like that. And sometimes I also go to countries where we're not very legal, and so there's often some dangers there. So, what to do when you're in difficulty? You have to just take shelter of the Lord and remember Him. Hmm. And we see, we saw, remember in the third canto, the, there was an example of Vidura being driven out from the palace of Hastinapur. So Vidura saw the two Mayas, he saw Yoga Maya and Maha Maya. He saw Duryodhan <laughs> manifesting the Mahamaya, kicking him out of the palace and threatening to beat him. But he saw also the Yoga Maya, he saw the hand of Krishna, that Krishna was encouraging him that this is very nice, you have an opportunity to go and visit the holy places and to associate with saintly people who are living in these holy places. So it's very good for you. So there are two sides to everything. There's the, the, the bad side and the good side, right? And we want to see Krishna, Krishna's arrangement. We have to learn to focus the mind on Krishna. Maybe you're in the car, you get some problem, you're driving. It's very dangerous sometimes. It's always good when you're driving the car, you really have to pray and think of Krishna. Even be before becoming a devotee as students, you know, <laughs> or when we were at school, but when we have exams, <laughs> pray to Krishna that somehow I can pass the exam. <laughs> These kind of things. Of course, that's very material. But we want to remember Krishna for our spiritual advancement. So Nanda Maharaj, he's worried not about himself, but he's afraid that he'd left Goku and he'd left his wife there and he'd left Rohini there and he'd left also the two children there. So he's really worried about the, if there's any danger, you know, who's going to be taking, show, taking care of them? So Nanda Maharaj is eager to get back there. Uh, our, so then it's mentioned that when Nanda Maharaj was returning, the same time Putana, whom, this is text number two, Putana, who Kamsa had previously engaged to kill babies, was wandering about doing her nefarious duty. And it's mentioned that uh, Kamsa, initially they were, they were going to kill the rishis. They were going to kill the saintly persons because if we kill all the brahmanas and saintly persons, then there'll be no more yagyas and the Lord Vishnu will be finished. But Kamsa was so worried about his own life, he told everyone, he told his demon friends, don't worry about the rishis, just concentrate on the babies. Get all the children who are 10 days and younger, who were born in the last 10 days and younger and kill them. And she would, she would go 
to different places, she go to the cities and the towns and the villages, she go into the places and find the young children and she'd let them drink her milk from her breast and she had poison on her breast. So that as soon as they smelled the poison, the little children would die. So text number three, after hearing about Kamsa and text number two and hearing about this demon Putana, then Maharaj Parikshit very, he thinks, oh my goodness, you know, what's going to happen? This demon Putana is going to go and kill the children. He becomes very worried. So then, understanding the mind of Maharaj Parikshit, Sukadeva Goswami speaks text number three, which is a very important verse for us. And in text number three, it describes that wherever there is the chanting of the holy name, wherever there is devotees performing their duties of Shravanam Kirtan, then these demons cannot come there. They cannot, there, there's no danger from bad elements. So there was no need for any anxiety about Goku while the, while the Supreme Personality of Godhead was personally present. Because the people who live there in Braja, they're always, they were always doing kirtan, they were always engaged in hearing and chanting, they were always absorbed in Krishna. So there was no danger for them. So Sukadeva Goswami speaks this verse to pacify the mind of Maharaj Parikshit, who was worried hearing about this powerful demon, Rakshasi, Rakshasi Putana, how she's expert in killing children. But we should always remember that. So long as there's hearing and chanting and the devotional services going on, then these demons, these inauspicious elements cannot take effect on us. We just simply have to have faith and be fixed in our activities of hearing and chanting. And we see, it's described, you know, Kamsa had sent Putana to go and kill babies. So where did she go? She didn't go to Goku. She went and killed all the people who were not doing devotional service. She went to the homes of all these non not just non-devotees, but they were, they were enemies of Krishna. They were against Krishna. Non-devotee is neutral. There's devotee and then there's non-devotee. Non-devotee means somebody who is neutral, he, hasn't, he doesn't make up his mind, he's not devotee, he's not against. But there's devotees and there's the enemies of the devotees. So this demon Putana had been going to the enemies of the devotees and she had been killing the children there because they don't do any devotional service so she could get in there. But she couldn't go wherever there's hearing and chanting. This is the way of devotional service. The devotional service makes a, a kavacha around the place wherever the devotees are. Is that understood by everyone? Maharaj? Yes. Uh, so not a single child died in Gokul or uh, uh, in that area? She could not kill any children in that area? No, she can't go home. The, the Sukadeva Goswami is saying, these demons, they, these demons and rakshasis, they cannot go wherever the, peop, the devotees are doing shravanam and kirtan. If they are engaged in their duties of shravanam kirtan, these demons cannot touch them. So none of the devotee children, none of the devotees' children were killed. But Kamsa's people, they didn't, they didn't do hearing and chanting, so they got their children got killed by Putana. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, um, I also read this before Maharaj and uh, um, the question 
it might be uh, of course you know i don't know but um, the question is how they got birth in uh, in uh, gokul or vrindavan when they are not uh, devotees of krishna or when they are not liking krishna well so how, how the, could be there are such houses where you know there are non devotees or but you have because, wait, you have to understand that the, vrindavan is not just simply a place on the map you see, the other, some people may be there in Vrindavan, they're not really in the Holy Dham because they don't, they don't have any faith in the Holy Dham. So they never see the Holy Dham. They don't, to them the whole, the whole place is covered. They just see with their material eyes. They don't have faith in spiritual practice. They don't have faith in the Supreme Lord. So they don't see the Holy Dham. So they're not actually in the Holy Dham. Just like people may be chanting Hare Krishna, but they don't actually understand the Holy Name. They don't have faith and they think it's a joke and they laugh and they, 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 they chant offensively sometimes. So they're not actually chanting the Holy Name. They're chanting the shadow of the Holy Name. Right? It's, yeah. it, it's covered. And the same way people living in the Holy Dham, they're not actually living in the Holy Dham. It's covered to them. There's a covering over it, which hides the Holy Dham from them. So that's how I understand it, that these people are living there, but they're, they're, not, actually, they're not devotees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because in other pastimes we always hear that all the Vrajvasis were busy engaged in... Uh, hearing and remembering and meditating on this pastime. So how can there somebody who exists who does not remember or uh, uh, do devotion? So that was my doubt. But yes, there might be some yes. of Ansa's people also. So there's there's dif there's bridge passes, <laughs> there's devotee bridge passes and there's these other people who are bridge passes, but they're not they're not real they're just materialists, they're just karmis. Hmm. So they're, not, they're, they're in the material Vrindavan. They're not actually in the Dham. They don't see the Dham. They're not risen. Due to some pious thing, they have got birth there. Mm, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe you could say some pious thing, but they're not pious enough to accept the process of devotional service. Yes. You, you, you don't get birth. You don't get devotional service by karma. They may take birth there, you see, material piety. It, it, it's just material. It's not spiritual. Punya karma doesn't get you devotional service. You have to yes. you have to do punya karma in relation to bhakti to get devotional service. But they don't yes. they don't do that. They just so they live in the holy they live there in Vrindavan, which is physical Vrindavan on the map, part of India in Mathura district. They don't actually see the holy dham. The devotees, they actually understand Vrindavan is not just a place in India, it's the spiritual world, it's the embassy of the, the spiritual world. And it's Lord Krishna's own residence, he resides there eternally. So when they go, they, they have a different mood in how they see the Holy Dham. Yeah? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. So, uh... Maharaj Bhimala Prasad Prabhu wants to say something. Oh, really? Yes? No, no, Maharaj. I, thank you, Maharaj. But I was just try, I was just thinking of adding the same thing. Actually, this is the discussion which we had briefly yesterday also about the Brajabasi. And like... Uh, my understanding was also like that, that everybody who is born in Braj Mandal need not be a devotee. If that be the case, then we must add all these demons who are coming to attack Krishna as devotees as well, because most of them are born in, at least they are living in Mathura. All these ministers of Kamsas who are coming to attack Krishna, to kill Krishna, they're all in that sense Brajavasis, then the Kamsa may be a Brajavasi. So then, like, then, then everybody has to be included in that frame of Rajavasis. So as I, as you said, Maharaj, only those who are devoted to Krishna 
can be considered as Braj Basis, even as we speak in 2021, like we see like uh, before this uh, current government, uh, Mathura was one of the most crime infested area in the whole of Uttar Pradesh, not to speak of uh, anybody else. So, I mean, those people who snatches the chains of the devotees, kill them, loot them for the money, I don't think what kind of Brajavasis they would be. <laughs> Certainly not the kind of Brajavasis we would like to associate with. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Very nice to hear this. Uh, all right, going ahead, text number four. Once upon a time, Putana Rakshasi, who could move according to her desire and was wandering in outer space, converted herself by mystic power into a very beautiful woman and thus entered Goku, the abode of Nanda Maharaj. We should note here the important point that she was wandering in outer space. So she had those powers that she could fly through the sky. And Putana, she likes to come in the night. She doesn't come in the daytime. She waits for it to get dark. And one of the uh, Acharyas, in his commentary, I think Sanatana Goswami, he said, it must have been a Saturday night. He said, Saturday is the most inauspicious day of the week. <laughs> I didn't know this before, but I was reading in this commentary, and he said, Saturday is the most inauspicious day of the week. It's certainly the day when people do the most sinful activities. It tends to be, you know, the weekend, Saturday night, People do a lot of nonsense. So he said, Putana came there to Goku. It must have been a Saturday. And she comes, and she waits for the night. She likes to come in the night. And she can take the form of an owl. Actually, she's, she, it's mentioned that uh, either she's the daughter of an owl, or she's the wife of an owl, or she has a form which is like an owl. So she could fly. And of course, owls, owls are birds who, they're active in the night. Just like the jackals are awake at night. So the owl is also at, at night. The daytime they will close their eyes, but at night they're active. And they're, they can be demonic, they can be nasty. So Putana has this form and she was traveling around, and somehow she came to Goku, the place of Nanda Maharaj. Uh, Prabhupada, he doesn't talk about her having a form of an owl, but he talks about witches, and he says some witches they have a broomstick and they can travel very fast. And he said, in India, there are still people who can do this. There are still witches. <laughs> in in uh, Europe and in England in the past, if there was a witch, they would burn her. They would burn her. It was the custom. If they, if they said somebody was a witch, they, they would have that custom. They had that uh, punishment that she would be burned or she would be drowned or something. So later on we'll hear about Putana being burned. Anyway, Putana has this power that she can change her form. So she takes the form of a very beautiful woman. And her, bo her bodily features are described. That her hips were full, her breasts were large and firm, seeming to overburden her slim waist, and she was dressed very nicely. Her hair adorned with a garland of Malika flowers was scattered about her beautiful face. <laughs> so we're hearing about the beauty of a living person 
And we'll hear about when she dies, she's the most ugly person. While she's alive, she's got this very beautiful form. But when she actually dies, she reveals her ugly form. So it's like that. Death is ugly. Life is beautiful and death is ugly. So when she comes into Goku, people are surprised. All the cowherd men were thinking, oh, who is she? We never saw her before. And she was very cunning and she would look at the men, you know, and she would give them glances and the men would get all agitated. They were thinking, oh, she's so attractive, oh, she's so beautiful. The cow, even the, in Goku, even the cowherd men were attracted to the beauty of this Putana. This is Yoga Maya's potency, <laughs> arranged like this. That this Putana could attract the minds of these men, although they're very great devotees. Not that they did anything sinful, but just they thought, who is she? They oh, very attractive. They thought, maybe she is the goddess of fortune herself. And the other ladies were asking, who are you? We never saw you before. She said, oh yeah, I'm the wife of a Brahmana. I've just come from Mathura. My husband's a Brahmana in Mathura. I've just come to see this uh, newborn child. Like that, she would joke, she'd tell some lie, something like this. And by the arrangement of Lord Krishna, or we could say Lord Krishna's potency, Putana found her way into the entrance of the home of Nanda Maharaj. And Mother Yashoda and Rohini are both there, and maybe other ladies were also there. And Lord Krishna is laying there, and this woman suddenly appears. She enters into their midst, and they were just they were just speechless. Like, oh, who is she? And the the amazing thing is that she was dressed like a cowherd woman. You know, maybe she had a, a, a gopi dress on or something. And she was looking just like a devotee. She appeared to everyone that she was just like them, like she was a devotee. So she comes into the midst and she's very clever and she sees the baby and she smiles at the baby. You know how the ladies are when there's a little baby. They go, oh, what a cute baby. So Putana also, she would make, make Faith smile and she came forward and nobody could stop. And everybody just stood back and they were just amazed that, oh, you know, she, she's a nice woman. And she wants to see the baby. So naturally, nobody stopped her. And she comes forward and then she's able to pick up the baby. Right? It's mentioned here. Let's see how it's described. It said, uh, while searching, text number seven, while searching for small children, Putana, whose business was to kill them, entered the house of Nanda Maharaj unobstructed, having been sent by the superior potency of the Lord. So we can understand Putana appearing there in the home of Nanda Maharaj was the arrangement of Lord Krishna. We could call it due to his Lila Shakti. The Lord has his different potencies, right? Bush Shakti. Lila Shakti and, and uh, what's the other potency? Sri Shakti, right? So without asking anyone's permission, she entered Nanda Maharaj's room and she saw the child sleeping in bed. His unlimited power covered like a powerful fire covered by ashes. <laughs> so this beautiful analogy is given in the verse, like a powerful fire covered by ashes. Lord Krishna was like that. 
He was lying there like a little child, laying down on the bed with the ladies around him. But Putana, she could understand that this child was not ordinary, but was meant to kill all demons. <laughs> so she could understand that, but she wasn't intelligent enough to just go away. <laughs> she thought, you know, I have to kill him. Of course, she's going to be killed, but she's thinking her purpose in coming and she's thinking she will kill the child. So Prabhupada writes, Demons are always busy creating disturbances and killing, but the child laying on the bed in the house of Nanda Maharaj was meant to kill many demons. <laughs> so this demon Putana, not only did she kill babies, but she drank blood as well. She was a rakshasi, a real rakshasi, you know, killing babies and drinking blood. Oh, <laughs> very uh, amazing. But still she's appearing, she's appearing just like the most beautiful woman, like she's Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. And she appears like a devotee, she's got the, the, the nice dress on, she's well decorated, her hair, you know, her hair and ornaments are all very nice. We have, to, th this is a lesson to us that we have to understand that external features are not enough to understand who is actually the devotee. Just to recognize someone as a devotee simply by their external appearance, that's not very good. And Prabhupada also talks about that. Prabhupada traveled so much, he was often in the airports, and he saw how well-dressed men, you know, they may have nice suits on and so on, and they've got expensive wristwatches, and they, they have a lot of money. But when they talk, they will talk just garbage. They talk just simply nonsense, useless, material things, mundane nonsense. So Putana, she's not saying much. She's just looking and smiling and, you know, looking at the baby and saying, oh, beautiful baby, and she's coming forward. And this way everyone is just overwhelmed. Text number eight, Lord Sri Krishna, the all-pervading super soul, laying on the bed, understood that Putana, a witch who was expert in killing small children, had come to kill him. Therefore, as if afraid of her, Krishna closed his eyes. Thus Putana took upon her lap him who was to be her own annihilation. Just as an unintelligent person places a sleeping snake on his lap, thinking the snake to be a rope. Another example is given to us here in this verse, thinking a snake to be a rope. Unintelligent person puts it on his lap, the same way Putana picked up the baby Krishna. Right? Putana Rakshasi also was perplexed. She was not intelligent enough to understand that she was taking a sleeping snake on her lap. She thought the snake to be an ordinary rope. Putana thought that she could kill the, the source of her annihilation. But because he is Ananta, unlimitedly, no one can kill him. So this is Putana's situation. She's got into the, ho the house and she's seen the baby and she's picking up the baby. She sees 
Krishna laying there. Uh, Krishna is described, Krishna has his eyes closed. When he sees Putana, he closes his eyes. Right? Why would he close his eyes? Would somebody tell us? There are different reasons why he would close his eyes. Nusringa Nitai Prabhu, can you tell us? Why did why did Putin, why did Krishna, baby Krishna close her eyes? Close, close his eyes when Putin, was, uh, my understanding is that Lord Krishna was thinking that uh, he should uh, deliver Putna and give uh, her as a mother position, motherly position. It, he should he should what? Give uh, liberation to Putna. Give liberation. And Lord Krishna also gave her position as a mother, mother position. Yes, but initially, what's why? What's his purpose in closing his eyes when she comes into the room? The liberation part that comes after he kills her. That's at the end. But initially, Lord Krishna sees this Putana witch come into the room. And she's looking at the baby and smiling, and of course she's got some evil intentions. She, her intention is to kill baby Krishna. So Krishna wants to encourage her. So how will he encourage her? There are different reasons the Acharyas say why Krishna would close his eyes. One reason was he didn't want to look on her face because she was so sinful, because she killed many babies. Although the, you could say, well, they were not devotee babies, but still, she killed many babies. She was a really evil person. She was very cruel and she drank blood. So Krishna closes his eyes. He doesn't want to see her face. Another reason is why he might close his eyes is he wants to encourage her to give her more confidence because she, just by looking at him, she could understand Oh, this child is no ordinary child. This child is very powerful. So Krishna, Lord Krishna wants to encourage her, give her the confidence to come forward and go through with her act. So Lord Krishna, by closing his eyes, this was like a, an encouragement to her. Maharaj, uh, Lord Krishna, he closed his eyes because he, uh, he never thought that she came to kill him because he was angry to put the kill another innocent children. That's why he closed his eyes. Okay, that's another reason. Yes, there's several, several different interpretations why he closed his eyes. That is also one. It's not that it was the only one, but there were other reasons given also. The Acharyas explain different reasons. We don't know exactly. It's not like Lord Krishna say, I close my eyes because, you know. You know, the, the Acharyas, we have, the Acharyas analyze why he might close his eyes. What was his purpose? So we have to understand the mood, the different reasons. <laughs> I mean, even Narottam Vilas Prabhu had something to contribute. I just, the point is like, as, as we read, it's like, because uh, two, two things were quite prominent. One was that she was a woman, and generally it is forbidden in the Shastra to kill a woman. Yeah. The exceptions are always there, but otherwise. And the sec uh, and second reason, like, if Krishna is drinking the milk of Putna, so she becomes like in the status of a mother. So, like, I mean, it's again very sinful to kill one's mother. So, Dhatri is one of the seven mothers, like those who, who like, feed you your milk, she becomes your nurse mother. So, so these were like quite prominent ones. That's all. Um, okay. Narutam Vilas Prabhu had, I think Narutam Vilas Prabhu had other things too. Yeah. Yes, different Acharyas give different opinions. Okay. Anyway, Mother Yashoda and Rohini, they didn't, they didn't stop her because they, they treated, they, they, they saw her that she was just like a mother to the child. Uh, 
Prabhupada says at the end of the purport, text number nine, Rohini and Yashoda were not, they were not, uh, uh, they were not maya, they were not maya mohita, deluded by the external energy, but to develop the pastimes of the Lord, they were captivated by yoga maya. Such maya, ma, maya moha is the action of yoga maya. So the pastime, for the purpose of the pastime, all this is going on. It's different things are happening. So Putana gets in there and she's picking up Krishna and she picks him up, Mother Rohini and Mother Yashoda, they just simply stand back and watch because they think, this is Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune come. And they pick Lord Krishna, she picks up Lord Krishna and then she uncovers her you know, her choli or something and shows her, puts her nipple of her breast towards the mouth of the child. So Lord Krishna then becomes angry at her and he takes hold of her breast and he squeezes it very hard with both hands and he st sucked out both the poison and her life. It's also described at this particular time that Lord Krishna's two lotus feet were walking on her body and she was trying to get him off. <laughs> she was trying to get Krishna off, but Lord Krishna wouldn't get off. <laughs> she was actually blessed with Lord Krishna's lotus feet walking on her. So Prabhupada writes, Lord Krishna was not angry at Putana for his own sake. Rather, he was angry because the Rakshasi had killed so many small children in Brajabhumi. Therefore, he decided that she should be punished by having to forfeit her life. So then Putana begins to cry. The Lord is squeezing her breast and Putana is screaming, leave me, leave me. Suck my breast no longer. And then she was perspiring and her eyes opened wide and her arms and legs flaying. She cried loudly again and again. And so she really got a lot of mercy from Lord Krishna. And it describes here, Krishna also began to kick her with his legs to punish her, to punish her properly for her mischievous activities. So, to, you get a kick from the Lord, his lotus feet. <laughs> very nice, very special. So, Putana is really getting purified by this. The Lord's lotus feet are touching her and he's drinking her milk, he's squeezing her breast. And, oh, she, she, she's so fortunate. Of course, she's suffering, she's feeling the pain. Purification is painful. <laughs> we know you get some purification, it's sometimes it's painful to be purified. So here we have Putana getting her purification and she's screaming loudly and forcefully. And it's described in text, text 12, the earth with its mountains and outer space with its planets trembled. The lower planets in all directions vibrated and people fell down, fearing that, that thunderbolts were falling upon them. So this was the effect, that the sound put in a screaming. It, it was very fearful for everyone. They'd never heard. They thought, what is wrong? What's going on? And said even the different, pla the lower planetary systems, they all could hear the noise. They were all hearing what's happening on the earth planet. So because Putana was being, because her breasts were being attacked by Krishna, she lost her life. 
Text 13 describes O King Parikshit opening her mouth wide, spreading her arms, legs and hair. She fell down in the pasturing ground in her original form as a Rakshasi, just as Vitrasura had fallen when killed by the thunderbolt of Indra. Now the comparison with Vit Vritasura is very good. Comparing Putana to Vritasura is very good. Anybody can point out what, why that comparison is made? What do they have in common, Putana and Vritasura? Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, both of them attained spiritual life. Yes, that's one thing in common. They both, and both had huge bodies. Right, yes. Those are the two reasons given by the Acharyas that Vrita means one who spread everywhere, and Putana, when she assumed her original form, she was also huge, like a mountain when she fell on the ground. So, they both had huge bodies and they both, when they gave up their bodies, they both went to the spiritual world. So they got very good destinations on being killed. So it's a very good example to give, comparing Putana to Vritasura. So Putana, when she, she actually was in the, whole, in the room of Nanda Maharaj, but it said she came out screaming. And she came out and she went in even to the outskirts of the village. And then she, she assumed her form as the Rakshasi, her original form. And she fell down and she flattened everywhere. It says even the trees became dust under the weight of her body. We can just, how heavy she must have been. She could crush a tree into dust. So, and she was how many miles long? When she fell down? Is it? Yes. Yes, Ma yes Mariji, how big was she? 20. 12. 12. 12, yeah, I think 12 is mentioned. 12 miles long. Mm -hmm. So she was just huge. Later on, when Nanda Maharaj comes back home and he sees this huge body, he thinks, what is this? Where did this come from? He, one, one, one thing he thinks, he said, maybe I've come in the wrong place. Maybe this is not my village. Maybe some yogi did some mystic powers and this is not my village. I've come to the wrong place because this body was so huge, it was like a mountain. Another thinking he had was, maybe this was a mountain. And, it, and it, you know, sometimes the flying mountains, have you seen flying mountains before? In the past, it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam that there were flying mountains and they had wings. And sometimes they'd be shot down. He said, maybe Indra shot the wings off of this mountain and crashed down. So Putana was just huge. She fell down, screaming. Mm -hmm. And it said when she fell down, because she'd just gone out, out to the outskirts of the village, when she fell down, she actually fell down on the fruit trees of King Kamsa. She fell down on the, fr the favorite fruit trees of King Kamsa and she crushed them all to nothing. <laughs> so that was good. The Kamsa's fruit trees all got destroyed. That must have made him angry. So Putana was certainly extraordinary. Then texts 15 to 17 describe some of the features of her body, how it was so huge. First of all, her mouth was full of teeth. And remember these teeth 
Well, we don't, she, what, I don't know what, she, she was drinking blood. Anyway, she, had, she has teeth, but these teeth resemble the front of a, of a plow. And her nostrils were like deep mountain caves. Her breasts were like big sl slabs of stone fallen from a hill. Her scattered hair was the color of copper. I think Vritasura also had that copper colored hair. It seems to be common for the demons. In Europe, we often see people with copper colored hair. The sockets of her eyes were like deep blind wells and her thighs resembled the banks of a river. So, very detailed descriptions about the different parts of her body, what they looked like. The hearts, ears and heads of the cowherd men and women were already shocked by the Rakshasi screaming and when they saw the fierce wonder of her body, they were even more frightened. So they heard her scream, but when she assumed that huge form, they were just overwhelmed. They thought, what on earth is happening? And Mother Yashoda and Rohini, they're going frantic. They're thinking, where is our baby? Where is Krishna? Where is he gone? And they were looking for him. They couldn't see him. They were so overwhelmed. They didn't know what had happened. They didn't see, they didn't see that Putana had gone out with him. He was holding on to her when she went out. When she went out of the room, he was holding on to her. He wouldn't let go of her. And when she fell down, he was still there. He was still holding on to her chest. When she assumed that big form, Lord Krishna was still holding on to her and he was playing on her chest. So that's mentioned in text 18. It's mentioned the upper portion of Putana's breast was where Krishna was playing. And when the gopis saw the child's wonderful activities, they immediately came forward with great jubilation and picked him up. So it was the other gopi ladies who picked him up. Mother Yashoda and Rohini, they were in the room. They were just still overwhelmed by the whole thing, the whole situation, what had happened. It was the other gopi ladies, they had actually understood, they'd gone out and they saw Krishna playing on the chest there of the deep big demon, big Rakshasi, and they picked up baby Krishna and brought him back to Mother Yashoda and Rohini. So it's a very interesting pastime, very important. It's the first demon to be killed by Lord Krishna. And it's important because we see that Lord Krishna doesn't have to take a big form like Putana. Putana had to assume her original form to try to save herself. But Lord Krishna, even as a baby, he's still Bhagavan. So the point is that God is always God. Even when he comes, even when he comes as a little baby, he's still the Supreme Lord and he's still Bhagavan. And he has all strength, he has all powers. And he can kill big demons like Putana. Now this is an important point in this incident. Prabhupada writes, Krishna remained the same. The purport of text 18, at the end of the purport, Krishna remained the same small child and fearlessly played on the upper portion of her breast. Sadaishwarya Purna. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is always full in all potencies, regardless of whether he is present in this form or that. 
His potencies are always full. Parashya Shakti Vividaiva Shruyate. He can display all potencies under any circumstances. So we see this most amazing circumstance that he's a little baby, but still he can dis display the full spiritual potency of Bhagavan and kill this huge demon. And in killing the, the demon, he gave her the greatest mercy. All right. Any, any questions on this? Just like in Ramlila, there was a, the, the first demon killed by Lord Ramachandra. What was that lady, the, the demon name, the Rakshasi lady? Takada. Taka, taka yes. So in Valmiki Ramayana, it's like that. Lord Rama, the first demon he had to kill when he was taken with Vishwamitra, there was this Rakshasi, and Vishwamitra told Lord Rama, you should kill her. So Lord Rama was hesitating, but Vishwamitra told him, he said, no, you have to kill her. Don't think that she's a woman. She's, a very, she's very sinful, she killed many people, she has to die. You have to kill her. So Lord Rama was hesitating, but under the instruction of Valmiki, uh, Vishwamitra rather, he killed her. And here you have Lord Krishna, he's killing this Putana witch. So we were saying, demons cannot come into Goku. How did Putana get into Goku? Right? Prima Bhakti Ras Maharaji, how did Putana get into Goku if demons can't come in there? Does it, does, does it mean that Nanda Maharaj or Mother Yashoda and Rohini, they were not doing their chanting? Were they negligent in their spiritual practice? So therefore Putana could come in and create some disturbance? Uh, she is known as Kechari. That's the name of came through the sky, uh, but how could she enter even through sky? That is, I think, your question, Naraj. So... Yes, how did she enter? Um, I, my question was more how she could, she could get into Goku, because Goku was the place where we were saying at the beginning, text number three says, in the beginning of the chapter, text number three says, wherever there is good devotional service, hearing, chanting, the Rakshasis, the demons, they cannot come there and disturb the devotees. Yes. So how did this witch get in there? Because her intention was to feed uh, breast milk to Krishna. Oh, she had the mood to give service to Krishna? So that, yes. that got her into Vrindavan? No, she came in an angry mood. She came to kill Krishna. Her thinking yes. was not just to give him milk, her thinking was to kill the baby. Right? She wants to kill him. Maharaj, there is a previous uh, pastime related to this uh, uh, Bali Maharaj's pastime, how she desired when she saw Vamande. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That, is it related to that? And Krishna wanted to fulfill her desire of uh, uh, well, feeding? Well, that could be part of it. Yeah, that's an interesting... You bring that up, that it said that Putana in her previous life she was the daughter of Bali Maharaj, right? Her name was yes. Ratna Mani, 
Ratnamala. Ratnamala. Yeah, Rat Ratnamala. So, what happened? She saw Lord Vamanadev and she... she she got very attracted to see uh, Vamandev and she felt, uh, uh, I wish he could be my child and I could feed him. Yes, right. She thought it would be nice to feed my breast milk to him. So, <laughs> I, that's mentioned anyway. But in one purple, it does say like that uh, somewhere in the Acharyas. But, uh, that's one reason we could say like that. But uh, the reason I was thinking was that this is all the Lord's pastime due to the Lord's Leela Shakti, by His internal potency, His Chit Shakti. He wants this pastime to take place he, because the Lord has come to kill the demons. So He has to kill these, these different demons like Putana. So He arranges for her to come. Her, her particular mood was to kill the babies, and so while he's a baby, you know, has, first one he has to he has to kill her, while he's still in that child form. If he grows up too much, you know, she won't come. <laughs> she won't. So while she, while he's still in the baby form, it's the time to kill her. Yes. So Lord Krishna arranges like that with his all his pastime, potency. All right, so then after the, 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 the gopis, they bring back Krishna, baby Krishna, to Mother Yashoda and Rohini. Then text 19 describes how all the elderly gopis, along with Mother Yashoda and Rohini, they began to do these different rituals for the protection of their child Krishna. And they began waving about the switch of a cow. Right? The, the switch of a cow. The, it's like the tail of the cow, isn't it? So they want, because they understood something inauspicious had happened. This woman had come and she was evil. So they, they thought, oh, Lord Krishna may be, he may be affected that this demon came and she's given trouble to Krishna. We have to protect our child. So they did all of these rituals we're going to hear in the next set of verses, the different rituals which they did. And all of these rituals were done, especially with uh, different things from the cow. Uh, and so it's, it's mentioned here that uh, what they would use the, the tail of the cow to protect the child from all types of danger. And then they would take the dust from the hoofs of the cow and smear it over the child. And they were using all the different things from, which were from the cow. And Prabhupada writes, he said, Here we find that in household affairs, ladies could take, a, take charge of protecting a child simply by taking help from the cow. So cows are so important, you know, every home should have a cow, you should have cows, and then it's so easy, you have, even if you just have one cow, it's enough, you get, you, if you have more, it's even better. Sometimes we would go on Harinam, Sankirtan, in different places in India, and sometimes a man would break, I remember one man brought us back to his home, and he had all these cows there at his home, it was so nice. And he fed us sweets made with milk and hot milk. It was so wonderful. So there are still people today protecting cows. Of course, not many, but it's important. And people need to know how to do these different rituals for the protection of the children. Generally, what happens nowadays, you know, what do we do with some problem? Oh, we want a puja done. <laughs> Right? Get the, get, can you do a puja for me? And we give some money to the Nisringa altar and we get them to do the puja. But actually what we should be doing, we should be doing the puja ourselves and we should do it with the things from the cows. It's all right, you give the donation to Lord Nisringa Dev also, that you can also do. But we shouldn't depend on others to do the rituals. And the ladies, this is the duty of the ladies, especially 
rituals to protect the children. So Prabhupada said, even now in the Indian villages surrounding Vrindavan, the villagers live happily simply by giving protection to the cows. They keep cow dung very carefully and dry it to use as fuel. They keep a sufficient stock of grains and because of giving protection to the cows, they have sufficient milk and milk products to solve all economic problems. Simply by giving protection to the cows, the villagers live so peacefully. Even the urine and stool of the cows have medicinal value. So we know this, of course, but it's important to do it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're so dependent on others. Everything is from the factory. We go to the drugstore to get medicines and everything. But it's all there from the cows, natural, homeopathic, right? <laughs> you get the things from the cows and use that. We can keep healthy. We have to protect the cow. We have, we have to use these things properly. All right, we'll have a break. Time for a break. We can chant your Gayatri. Stopped. Like to begin again. Okay, we're on text number twenty. We're hearing about how the ladies, the gopis in Braja, how they were doing the rituals for the the child. And it's mentioned they use the dust raised from the movements of the cows. Recording in progress. The child was thor thoroughly washed with cow urine. And then the dust from the cows and different names of the Lord were applied with cow dung on 12 different parts of his body, beginning with the forehead, just as we do with tilak. And this way the child was given protection. So, we, we could ask, why, why would they want to protect Krishna when he's the, Lord Krishna, he's the Supreme Lord? Does he need somebody to protect him? Yes? What do you think? Why, why these gopis are doing all of this for the for the the supreme lord these gopis they know he, he's the supreme lord they, they know he's god right they're all these ladies these gopis are all pure devotees they're all liberated souls that they understand this child is not ordinary, he's the Lord himself, they all have great love for him. So why do you think they're having to do all these rituals to protect the child? Yes? Marijis? Prima Bhakti Ras Mariji? Could you give us an answer? Okay, I'll answer it myself then. <laughs> Nobody wants to answer. Certainly, these ladies are all enlightened ladies. Maharas, you could not hear you. I'll leave you in bed and mute Maharas. Oh. oh, I'm muted, huh? Okay. Okay, you, now you can hear me. Okay, so we're at the point where the gopis were performing rituals for the purification of Lord Krishna. And text number 20 describes 
how the child was washed in cow urine and then they used the dust rays from the, the hoofs of the cows, they smeared it all over his body and then they used cow dung to mark different parts of his body just like we do with tilak and they began with the forehead, you know, just like we do Om Keshavaya Namaha. So they also chanted the names of the Lord on different parts of the body of, of this child, who is actually the Lord himself. So I was wondering, and maybe somebody could tell me, why do you think these ladies are going to do so much to protect this child? Because this child is actually the Lord, he's the personality of Godhead himself, he's Swayam Bhagavan. Why do you need to give him protection? Maharaja, they never considered Krishna had to be to be the Supreme Lord. Why? And they always consider because of, uh, I'm not very sure, maybe because of Mahamaya Maha Kaveri. Or most of the Vrajavasis uh, never consider Krishna as a Supreme and they always consider him to be one among them. Okay, yes, because they have, they have that special love for Krishna, the sweetness of their loving exchange with Krishna, right? That if they think of Krishna as God, then that sweetness is not there anymore. If you're thinking this child is God, then it will be on veneration and reverence give obeisances and everything, it will be a different mood. But in the mood of, for, for in the mood of sweetness for the greater ras, to enjoy the higher ras, these gopis who are all enlightened ladies, they're all great devotees, they're pure devotees, they simply see the Lord, they see him as a child. And they're the, they're the mothers. Their duty is to protect the children. Women love children. They'll have special love for their own children, but they love all children. They care for all. And of course, when it comes to Lord Krishna, all women love Krishna. Because Krishna is the soul in the heart of everyone. So there's the person we love more than anybody is Krishna. And these ladies are in the mood of mothers. They're thinking of Krishna as their, as their child and they want to protect him. So it goes on describing, very text number 21, how they did Akshman, sipping the water from the right hand, purified their bodies and hands with the Nyasa mantra, and then applied the same mantra upon the body of the child. So, this is the mood of the gopis. They know how to do these things. We see often when we come to give people initiation, we have no idea how to do this. Most people, they don't know, unless they're somehow brought up in the culture, they know. Usually at the time of initiation, they learn how to do these things like Akshman, how to purify themselves. So, very simple process, not very difficult. We just have to chant the names of the Lord and sip some water. This is the culture. And Prabhupada says, by losing Indian culture, Indian householders have forgotten how to execute the Anga Nyasa and are simply busy in sense gratification without any advanced knowledge of human civilization. So this unfortunate condition, this is what happens with economic development, that we lose the culture, we become addicted to all these different acts of sense gratification. And we don't know how to do the basic things, like how to protect our children, how to give them proper protection. Of course, people in the, in the cities, 
they don't know these things. But in the, in the villages still today, in the countryside, people will know better. At least they should know. We hope so. So Sukadeva Goswami is describing to Maharaj Parikshit and we hear uh, the different names of the Lord being chanted. The gopis followed the proper system protecting Krishna with this mantra. And different parts of the body are being protected. <laughs> may Aja protect your legs, may Maniman protect your knees. <laughs> so up, all the way up to the body, come up to the top of the head. Vishnu, your arms, Urukram, your face, Ishwara, your head. May Chakri protect you from the front. May Sri Hari Gadarhar, the carrier of the club, protect you from the back. So the, the different deities of different directions, first of all, the different deities of the different bodily limbs, and then the different deities of the different directions, and this, they want to protect the Lord in every way possible. May Lord Urugaya, the carrier of the conch shell, protect you from all corners. May Upendra protect you from above. May Garuda protect you on the ground. And may Lord Haladhara, the Supreme Person, protect you on all sides. Prabhupada writes in the purport, people should know how to do this, for this is a part of Vedic civilization. It's done with the help of cow dung, cow urine. Simple and practical way. What do we do today? We do things, you know, you get things like antiseptics and chemicals. <laughs> You want, you get insurance policies and you, you take, you take vitamin tablets and things like that. Everything is so artificial, unnatural, but actually everything is provided for us by the grace of God. If we use what is the gifts of nature, we'll be much more effective. So these gopi ladies, they knew how to do this. 5,000 years ago. Then we, we see a text 24 describes about protecting the, the inside. We heard about protecting them outside in all different directions. Then 24 goes on talking about the inner elements of the body of the Lord. May Rishikesh protect your senses. Narayan, your life heir, may the master of Sweta Dweep protect the core of your heart, and may Lord Yogeshwara protect your mind. So all different <laughs> items of protection. And then it goes, it continues like that, text 25, 26, more things are being described. Krishna Garba, protect your intelligence. The personality of Godhead protect your soul. <laughs> and then at the end, uh, similarly may Lord Yagnabuk, the fearful enemy of all evil planets, always protect you while you enjoy life. <laughs> so they pray so many different ways to protect the child. And then 27 to 29 describes so many different demons who we don't want them to disturb the child. Then it mentions so many different inauspicious dakinis, evil women, right? Dakinis are evil women. The, all the, these evil women are all the enemies of the children. It talks about evil stars, evil, like the most experienced evil star, they all create great disturbances, especially for children. But one can vanish them simply by uttering Lord Vishnu's name. For when Lord Vishnu's name resounds, all of them become afraid 
and go away. So this is important for us to understand. The power of the holy name, by chanting the holy name, then all the inauspiciousness is driven away. Right now, Kale Kale Kali Kali Kirtana Deva Krishna Shya Mukta Sangha Paramparaja. The age of Kali is an ocean of faults, but there's one good thing about it. Simply by chanting the holy name, one can get perfection. So we see here also how the gopis took shelter of the holy name. They used the holy name to purify and to protect the child inside, outside, above and below, everywhere. They, took sh they made full use of the holy name. In the purport of text 29, Prabhupada mentions, he said, uh, Ayurvedic Shastras re recommend Oshadi Chintayat Vishnum. Even while taking medicines, one should remember Vishnu, because the medicine is not all and all, and Lord Vishnu is the real protector. So when you take medicine, you should remember that. O Shadi Chintayat Vishnum. It's a Chintayat Mantra. Just like we say, usually we just say, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. Because ultimately it's not the medicine which is going to cure us or save us. It's Lord Vishnu. Right? In Bengali they say, if Krishna wants to kill someone, nobody can save him. And if Krishna wants someone to live, nobody can kill him. We have to depend on Krishna. That is the real protection, not the medicines, not the doctors, not the, all the things they do to you in the hospital and everything. We have to just depend on Krishna. So this process of doing these rituals is to get people to become more Krishna conscious, get them to chant the holy name. That's very important. Prabhupada writes, therefore, text 29 purport, therefore one must become a Vaishnava and think of Vishnu constantly. This is made easier by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then he quotes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he is recommended, Kirtaniya Sadahari. And he quotes other verses also, Kirtanad Eva Krishna Shya Mukta Sangha Parambrajit. Oh, the same verse, you see. So, the holy name, that is the real medicine for all disease. Take shelter of the holy name. Going ahead, text number 30. All the gopis headed by Mother Yashoda were bound by maternal affection. After they thus chanted mantras to protect the child, Mother Yashoda gave the child the nipples of her breast to suck and then got him to lay down on his bed. Prabhupada remarks that when the child is healthy, then he'll be eager to drink the milk from the mother's breast. So it's a sign of health that the child wants to drink the, mu the milk of his mother. A healthy baby will want that. And Krishna was showing, he was a healthy child, he wants to drink his mother's milk. Mother Yashoda, she's doing many other things, but Damodar Lila, we know, she, sometimes she put down Krishna, but Krishna wants, he's eager to drink the milk from his mother's breast. Very healthy for the child. So at that time then all the cowherd men headed by Nanda Maharaj, they came back from Mathura. Text 31. And when they saw on the way the gigantic body of Putana laying dead, they were struck with great wonder. Nanda Maharaj was especially shocked 
Why would he be shocked? Why was Nanda Maharaj shocked to see this? Anyone? Maharaj, maybe he was uh, connecting it to the prediction of Vasudev and he thought, oh, oh and there was some danger here in Vrindavan, like predicted by Vasudev. Yes, right. He would, th he would think, oh, v this Vasudev is a great sage. He must be a perfect yogi. He can tell the future. He knew, he, somehow he knew. You know, Nanda Maharaj was just surprised that Vasudev told me that I have to get back to Goku and now I see that some nonsense is going on here. What's been going on here? Nanda Maharaj was bewildered. He thought, what has been going on? This big Rakshasi woman's body is laying everywhere. It crushed so many people. It's, the Acharyas say that her, when she was alive, she was killing people, and when she died, also she was killing living entities. Her whole business was killing, right to the, her death. When she fell over dead, she killed so many, she crushed people, crushed living entities. So many creatures died under her weight. So, Vas uh, Nanda Maharaj was also thinking, Vasudev warned me. Vasudev knows that he knew the future. And he thought, you know, he must be a great sage. Maybe he's per perfected his yoga. He's done some, you know, he's got some yoga powers, yoga cities, and now he's telling me the future. He told me the future. So he had even, his respect for Vasudev was increased seeing that. Hmm. Of course, it was also a very, very gigantic form, 12 miles long, huge, like, like a mountain, just like we go around Govardhan Hill, Govardhan Hill is like that, 22 kilometers, 24 kilometers to go around. So you can imagine, you have Putana, just like a, another, you know, <laughs> Govardhan Hill in the form of a woman. So they, when they saw Putana laying dead, they were struck with wonder. They thought maybe, maybe, maybe she was at a mountain and she fell down. They cut off her wings and so she fell down. They couldn't, they couldn't begin to imagine what happened. But then also he remembered about Vasudev, because Vasudev has another name, Anakadumbabi, right? Anakadumbabi, we heard the Dumbabi is the drum, and Anika, and it meant at the time of his birth, at the time of his birth, they were beating the drum, they were be beating the Dumbabi, the Dumbabi drum. So it was like heralding the arrival when he took birth. It was like recognizing that he's a great soul. So Nanda Maharaj thought, yeah, he's really a great soul because, you know, because he could predict this. And he said, oh, from his birth, he was, the, 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 why else would they be playing the drum? They must have thought he's a great soul. So from his birth he was understood to be a great soul. Now he's showing it to me that he knew the future and he told me to get back to Goku to protect everyone there. So these are some points about Nanda Maharaj coming into Braja. So text 22, Nanda Maharaj and the other gopas exclaimed, My dear friends, you must know, Anakadumbabi Vasudev has become a great saint or a master of mystic power. Otherwise, how could he have foreseen this calamity and predicted it to us? 
Vasudev and Prabhupada writes in the purport, Vasudev actually had all mystic powers under his control. Otherwise, he could not have become the father of Krishna. But in fact, he foresaw the calamities in Braja by studying Kamsa's political activities and thus warned Nanda Maharaj to take precautions. So Vasudeva was really a saintly person and even though he has all mystic powers, when he was put in the prison house of Kamsa, he didn't use them. He just tolerated. He accepted it. And even though Kamsa came, killed the children, he didn't stop. He kept his word because he would promised Kamsa that I will give you the children when they're born, one after another. So he kept his promise. He showed his integrity. All right, then we hear text number 33. The inhabitants, the inhabitants of Braja, they cut the gigantic body of Putana into pieces with the help of axes. And then they threw pieces they threw the pieces far away, covered them with wood, and burned them to ashes. And Prabhupada explains like that. Why, why did they burn the body? What's the reason? When you kill a snake, you're supposed to burn the body. Why? It will come back to life again. Right. Actually, this, they, I heard the story, I heard they say, they say if, if you kill a snake, they say the snake takes a picture of the person killing it with its eyes. It takes a picture of the person killing it. And that picture of the person who killed it is there in his eyes. And then the other snake comes, he will look in the eyes of the dead snake and he will see the picture of the person who killed the snake and he can come and get that person who killed the snake. So that's what they, that's one, one reason that <laughs> why, they, why they burn the snake or so, you, you, don't want, you don't want the other snake to come and look in the eyes and see who killed it because it's going to be a problem. But the other thing is they, they could come back to life again. And we see like Jarasandha Jarasandha, Bhima ripped him in half. <laughs> but sometimes the two pieces would come back together. So he had to throw them really far away so they couldn't come back together. I don't know, maybe that's why they burned humans. Eh? They don't want us to come back to life again. Better to burn them, become ashes. Okay, text 34. Because of Krishna having sucked the breast, the Rakshasi Putana, when Krishna killed her, she was immediately freed of all material contamination. Her sinful reactions automatically vanished. And therefore, when her gigantic body was being burnt, the smoke emanated from her body was fragrant like a guru incense. So a guru incense is supposed to be the best of all fragrances, very, very wonderful, very mesmerizing fragrance. So that smell was very wonderful. How did, how was it put in his body could give such a nice smell? Because Lord Krishna had taken away all of our sinful reactions, automatically vanished because Lord Krishna had killed her. She got the mercy, right? We described how she got that mercy. How did Lord Krishna purify her? Just simply by squeezing her breast. Remember, she was a rakshasi. She had killed many babies and she drank blood. But what was her good side? 
What was on her, what was in her favor? Yes? Gorsunda? She had desired to feed Krishna milk. Krishna took, accepted that particular uh, gesture of love. Oh. Okay, she desired to do some service to Krishna. She wanted to feed milk to Krishna, that was one thing. Anything else? She was a sister of uh, Bali Maharaj, uh, so not fevered because of that. Her connection to pure devotee. That was from the previous life. That reason, I've never heard that reason given before that the Lord favored her because of her relationship with Bali. Uh, I don't know, Raj, but yes? Uh, Sanatan Goswami says that she dressed like a gopi. Yes, that's a good one. That's an important point. She dressed like a gopi. The dress is important, you know. <laughs> Even you're not a devotee, if you dress like a devotee, if you imitate the devotees, very beneficial. You see, Putana got the mercy because she dressed like a devotee, she dressed like somebody who's a devotee. So she had the right dress. And so that helped her to get the mercy of the Lord, to get that benediction. Hmm. So that was in her favor. She dressed proper. She dressed like the devotee, and she came to feed. She wanted to feed Krishna, even though she's got poison on her breast. So the compassion of the Lord is so great. He doesn't see what she's doing. He, he, he doesn't. She doesn't. He doesn't see so much the harm she's doing. He sees only the good side in her. The Lord is very compassionate. And he purifies her, so much so that when they burn her body, has this wonderful fragrance. Oh. Usually burn dead bodies, it's terrible, horrible. You ever gone, been in a graveyard where the crematorium? You know, it's a horrible smell, dead bodies. But here's Putana, her body was so big and so hard, that it crushed the trees to powder. But when they burn it, they chop it up and burn it, it's fragrant, like a guru. So just amazing. This is the potency of Lord Krishna. At the end of the purport, text 34, Prabhupada writes, she was immediately purified so much so that when her nasty material body was burned to ashes, it gave off the fragrance of a guru, the most agreeable scented herb. All right, so Putana's body is burned, and, and then there's 35, 30, because she offered her breast to the Lord, she attained the greatest achievement. What then is to be said of those who had natural devotion and affection for Krishna as mothers and who offered him their breast to suck or offered something very dear as a mother offers something to a child? Right? You offer something. Just like we know in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, leaf, flower, fruit, water, you offer. Mm. Or other verse, mud karma. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities, you per should be done as an offering to me. Right? The, the offering to Krishna. So offer what we offer, it should be something which is dear to us. If we offer something which is very dear to us, and if we offer the most dear thing to us, then that will be more pleasing to Krishna naturally. If we give the most dear thing to Krishna, we offer something, oh, oh it's, yeah, the, well, this is nice. But if you give something which you really value, just like we encourage, give your whole life to Krishna. 
That's the best thing to do, if you can give your life to Krishna. Give something which we're very attached to. So the mothers, they like to give something. So Putana, what did she give? Did she give something that was dear to her? No, she simply, she came with poison on her breast to offer her poison to Krishna. So, Krishna is so compassionate, Lord Krishna is so kind that he accepted that. He saw that she wants to offer me something and she's dressed like a devotee and she's coming with love and looking at me so nicely and saying nice things to me, treating me like a baby. Of course, she has her evil intentions. Prabhupada writes in the purport, text 36, if Putana could attain such an exalted position with, in spiritual life by neglectfully, enviously making an offering to Krishna, what is to be said of Mother Yashoda and the other gopis who serve Krishna with such great affection and love, offering everything for Krishna's satisfaction? So we should understand Putana's position, that she got special mercy from Lord Krishna. She didn't have the same devotion, of course, like Mother Yashoda. She didn't come to give anything very valuable. She didn't give the most valuable thing to Krishna. So she doesn't get the same position in the spiritual world. She doesn't actually become mother, she becomes nurse. And that is described in the third canto by Uddhava. Aho pakiyam stanakala kutam jagam sayapayanad apya sarvi labegatim datri uchitam tanunyam. Like that, datri, right? Nurse. She's a nurse. She's not a mother. She doesn't get the position of a mother. The other ladies, like the gopis, they were giving their breast milk to Krishna. They also had the mood of being mothers. When Brahma stole away the cowherd boys and the calves, at that time Lord Krishna took their place. So Lord Krishna drank the milk of all those gopis. He drank their breast milk. They, th of course the gopis, they thought, this is our son, but it, it was actually Krishna. So all those gopis in Vrindavan, they all got to become Krishna's mother. And this, they all went back to Goloka to be Krishna's mothers. They're Krishna's mothers eternally. And the cows and the calves, they also go back to Godhead because they're also giving milk. And they go back, they're cows in the spiritual world. They're cows in Vrindavan and they become cows again in the spiritual world. And they give their milk for Lord Krishna in Goloka. What about Putana? Now Putana, she, she got mercy from Krishna. How did she get mercy? I explained one thing was that Krishna took hold of her breast and he drank something, he sucked her breast or took, and in that time he took out her life there. And in addition, his lotus feet, his lotus feet which are worshipped by great demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, who are all desiring to get the dust from his lotus feet. Lord Krishna, as a tiny baby, his lotus feet walked on that body of Putana at the time of her leaving the body. At the time of her leaving the body, Lord Krishna is walking there on her body with his lotus feet. So, that's very, very special. Very, very special. So, she get, but she doesn't have the mood of devotion anywhere near like Mother Yashoda. But she does get to go to Goloka. She goes to Goloka and she's a nurse there, one of the nurses who take care of the different arrangements for the 
the children there. All right? Is that understood? Everybody agree? Okay, going ahead, text number 38. The personality of Godhead Krishna is always situated within the core of the heart of the pure devotee. And he is always offered prayers by such worshipable pers personalities as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Because Lord Krishna embraced Putana's body with great pleasure and sucked her breast, although she was a great witch, she attained the position of a mother in the transcendental world. And this achieved the highest perfection. What then is to be said of the cows whose nipples Krishna sucked with great pleasure and who offered their milk very jubilantly with affection exactly like that of a mother? In this verse, they've used the word mother, but we should understand there are different kinds of mothers, right? How many mothers are there? Seven mothers. Seven, Seven right. Mothers. Can you name them? Brahmana's wife, king's wife, nurse, own mother, cow, and uh, earth. Okay, that's six. Yeah, but anyway, very good. Yeah. Guru's wife also. Guru's wife, okay. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Very nice, yeah. So, nurse, you see, there's different kinds of mothers. Although, although they've said here she became a mother, actually, more accurately, she became nurse. Because her devotion, her position cannot be equal to that of the gopis and the mother Yashoda or even the cows who are giving so much love and devotion for Lord Krishna and pure devotion. And you could say she came in the back door. <laughs> she got in the back door of the spiritual world. Special mercy, Lord Krishna brought her in. But that shows the power of bhakti. Anybody who does a little, just a little bhakti, and we see Putin, what did she do? What little bhakti she did? She dressed like a gopi, and she has, she's coming, and she's smiling at Krishna, but she's... <laughs> and just because of that, she gets to go back to Godhead. So that is Krishna's special mercy. So we'll read the purport here, it's very nice. These verses explain how devotional service rendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whether directly or indirectly, knowingly or unknowingly, becomes successful. Putana was neither a devotee nor a non-devotee. She was actually a demonic witch instructed by Kamsa to kill Krishna. Right? This comes up sometimes, a little puzzling to hear when you first hear it. We would think Putin is a non-devotee, but non-devotee simply means one who's neutral. He hasn't made a decision whether he's devotee or not. He's neutral. But she was actually a demon and she was outwardly opposed. Nonetheless, in the beginning, she assumed the form of a very beautiful woman and approached Krishna exactly like an affectionate mother, so that Mother Yashoda and Rohini did not doubt her sincerity. The Lord took all this into consideration, and thus she was automatically promoted to a position like that of Mother Yashoda. As explained by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, there are various roles one can play in such a position. 
Putana was immediately promoted to Vaikuntha Loka, which is also sometimes described as Swarga. The Swarga mentioned in this verse is not the material heavenly planet, but the transcendental world. In Vaikuntha Loka, Putana attained the position of a nurse, Datri Uchitan. Right? They're quoting the verse spoken by Uddhava in the third canto. As described by Uddhava, Putana was elevated to the position of a nurse and maidservant in Goloka Vrindavan to assist Mother Yashoda. So very clearly supported here with scriptural evidence to understand the position of Putana. And another verse here, again emphasizing the power of bhakti, 39-40, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the bestower of many benedictions, including liberation or oneness with the Brahman effulgence. For that Personality of Godhead, the gopis always felt maternal love and Krishna sucked their breasts with full satisfaction. Therefore, because of their relationship as mother and son, although the gopis were engaged in leaving their bodies. So, these gopis, ladies, they're all goddesses of fortune. They're the, the best of the goddesses of fortune, and they're position is in the supreme planet in the spiritual world, in Goloka Vrindavan, where they serve Lord Krishna as mothers, taking care of Lord Krishna in the mood of a mother. No, of course, they may have also their own children, their own families in Goloka Vrindavan. It's like that. The gopis are working, doing many activities, but they're constantly doing kirtan. They're always chanting the glories of Lord Krishna. So Goloka Vrindavan is a very special place in the spiritual sky. Vaikuntha is a different mood. Vasudev and Devaki, they also come to Goloka Vrindavan. They're also there with Krishna, taking part in his pastimes. But they're also there in Dwarka too. They have a, some di little differences there. So we want to understand Lord Krishna's position, the power of bhakti, the importance of rasa, becoming Krishna's mother or Krishna's father. It's a very nice, wonderful opportunity. Just like in the material world, people get so much pleasure out of having a family, you have a child, you have so much love for them, so much attachment. We could just imagine how much pleasure there must be in being the father or the mother of Lord Krishna. Of course, the, the Christians, they have the mood that they, were, they think of God as the father. But in Krishna consciousness, we can become the father of God. We can become the father of Krishna conscious philosophy is superior to the Christian philosophy because they're simply thinking God the Father, God is there to provide for me, should provide everything I need. We go to God to ask everything. But the position of the devotee is to give, to take care of God, to protect Him. Just like we heard today, how the ladies, the gopis of Vrindavan, how they did so many rituals for the protection of baby Krishna. And they were always so anxious for the protection of the child. So this is the mood of the devotee, to give service, not to take service. In the purport there, text number 40, Prabhupada writes, even though the gopis who were friends of Rohini and Mother Yashoda and who allowed their breasts to be sucked by Krishna were not directly Krishna's mother, they all had the same chance as Rohini and Yashoda 
to go back to Godhead and act as Krishna's mother-in-law, servants and so on. So there was no question of being in the wheel of samsara for these gopis because they are pure devotees. And they have all the knowledge but they enjoy the affection for Lord Krishna. Then at the end of the purport of text 40, Prabhupada writes, the easiest way to attain spiritual elevation. This is a good answer. You know, people often ask, what's the easiest way to get liberated? He said, the easiest way to be liberated from this material world and to go back home, back to Godhead, is recommended by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Krishnera samsara kari chadi andata. Anachar. Huh? One should give up all sinful activities and remain in the family of Krishna. Then one's liberation is guaranteed. So we're not against family life. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was also asked about family life. Right? What did he say, Srinivas Prabhu? What did Bhakti Thakur say? Well, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati say? When he asked, what was better, Grihastha life or Brahmachari life, single or married life, which is better? They asked Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, do you know what he said? Fa family life, who knows? Atul Krishna, do you know? Maharaj, as far as I remember, he said that um, I'm not that strong to be in Grahastha life. No, that wasn't that. Yes, Maharaj? Yes, Prabhu. So I chose the. He said, uh, if I could beget uh, Krishna conscious children, then I would father 100 sons. Okay. But since I cannot do that, so I remain celibate. Yeah. And there is another answer I heard. Anybody else? Anybody has another answer? Anyone? No? The answer I heard was, he said, family life is a better one. Family life is better than being single. But he said, not the family of the material world, the family of Krishna, the family of Nanda Maharaj. You have to be in that family. That's the best family. We want to be there in that family. Not the family of the material world. That is no good. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur is quoted here by Prabhupada. He said, then once liberation is guaranteed, give up sinful activities, remain in the family of Krishna. Of course, our Krishna conscious movement is the representation of the family of Krishna. We stay in the Krishna consciousness movement, everything dedicated to Krishna. That is the family of Krishna with the devotees. Krishna's homes, the temples of Krishna are Krishna's homes. And all the devotees are serving Krishna so nicely. Okay, text 41. Upon smelling the fragrance of the smoke emanating from Putana's burning, burning body, many inhabitants of Brajabhumi in distant places were astonished. Where, where is this fragrance coming from, they asked. Thus they went to the spot where Putana's body was being burned. <laughs> They were all wondering, where is the smell coming from? Then text 42, when the inhabitants of Braja, who had come from distant places, heard the whole story of how Putana had come and then been killed by Krishna, they were certainly astonished. And they obtained and they offered their blessings to the child for his wonderful deed of killing Putana. 
they give their blessings to Krishna. Nanda Maharaj, of course, was very much obliged to Vasudeva, who had foreseen the incident and simply thanked him, thinking how wonderful Vasudeva was. So hearing about the incident, this is the beginning of Lord Krishna's fame, of course. People around Vrindavan, they're going to hear. They were all here because they all saw this huge Rakshasi, Rakshasi body and they knew that little baby Krishna had killed the Rakshasi and then Krishna is going to kill other demons and gradually Krishna's fame will become more and more, more and more and people will hear. And that's why when Krishna at the age of 11, when he went to Mathura, all the people were anxious to see him. And the ladies of Mathura, they're on the rooftops to look at Krishna. They'd heard about him. It's so wonderful. This way people were, the devotees at least, were becoming more and more oh, inspired hearing about Krishna. Then the final verse, O Maharaj Parikshit, best of the Kurus, Nanda Maharaj was very liberal and simple. He immediately took his son Krishna on his lap, as if Krishna had returned from death. And he, formerly smelling his son's head, Nanda Maharaj undoubtedly enjoyed transcendental bliss. Right? Why did Nanda Maharaj enjoy so much bliss? Different reasons, several reasons why he enjoyed the bliss. Yes? Atu Krishna Prabhu? Maharaj seeing Krishna very safe. So maybe that was one, because as soon as he <coughs> took his son on the lap, because um, Krishna was on his lap, he felt happiness. Yes, yes, that's one, some re one reason. He put his son on his lap and then also what, what else did he do? He smelled his hair. Yeah, he smelled, smelled his son's head. This is common, common thing. You've seen elders do that to their children when the little child comes to them. They may put their head, they smell their, their head. And so Nanda Maharaj did that to Lord Krishna and he, of course, he was happy also to be home because he'd gone to Mathura. So you come home, when you get home, oh, you, you know, it's such a relief. Maybe, you, you know, here in Mayapur, we go to Calcutta and come back, you feel relieved. Or you're here, there in Calcutta, you go to Vrindavan, you come back, you feel the relief to get back to your home and get back to your place. And so Nanda Maharaj was certainly happy to get back to Goku to be with his family and to be with his wonderful son and to see his son was safe. Prabhupada says, Nanda Maharaj could not understand how the inhabitants of his house had allowed Putana to enter the house, nor could he imagine the gravity of the situation. He was thinking, how did this happen? Who, how did this nonsense all happen in my home? You let Putana in? He thought, what about the guards on the, on, on the, 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 around Vrindavan? Didn't they stop her? Of course, she flew in. So, <laughs> you know, you can't control birds flying. She flew in. So she, and she flew in the night. So nobody could see her. So difficult. But Nanda Maharaj couldn't understand these things. He's just thinking, how you could allow this woman to come in like this to our home? He did not understand that Krishna had wanted to kill Putana and that his pastimes were performed by Yoga Maya. Nanda Maharaj simply thought that someone had entered his house and created havoc. This was Nanda Maharaj's simplicity. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, there is one more verse. 44, any person who hears with faith and devotion, so this is a fruit of hearing the pastime. Uh, 
Anyone who hears with faith and devotion about how Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, had killed Putana, and who thus invests his hearing in such childhood pastimes of Krishna, certainly attains attachment for Govinda, the Supreme Original Person. So this is the benediction we're given by Sukadeva, by Sukadeva Goswami through Vyasadeva. We want to hear these pastimes, childhood pastimes. Prabhupada's purport, the incident in which the great witch attempted to kill the child but was killed herself is certainly wonderful. Therefore, this verse uses the words adbutam, meaning specifically wonderful. Krishna has left us many wonderful narrations about him. Simply by reading these narrations as they are described in Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one gains salvation from this material world and gradually develops attachment to and devotion for Govinda, Adi Purusha. This ends Bhaktivedanta purports of chapter number 6. Any questions? Anyone? We still have five minutes, at least. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Um, we see that devotees of Krishna, they are going through real hardship. And many times, demons get some blessing very easily, like Putanan, very easily uh, liberated. And devotees, they are beaten up in marketplace and... Uh, uh, so, how can we encourage ourselves uh, to be devotees when we see that actually our quota is more struggling than the demon? Well, I, I don't think you should think of it so much as a struggle. You should think that if Putana could get liberation so easily, then certainly we will get it if we go on with our devotion. If we continue to devote ourselves offering everything, do regular sadhana, spiritual practices, eating prasadam and discussing topics of Krishna, then certainly we will also get more, much more than Putana got. It's certainly possible. We shouldn't think, oh, it's so difficult. No, if Putana could get it so easily, then it's also, more is available for us. We have to want, we have to want it, we have to, we have to be steady and we have to have faith, faith in what we're doing, that this is certainly the goal of life and we don't want to waste this opportunity. Just give this one life to Krishna, or you'll never regret it. So it's the greatest opportunity. So you have to have more faith. You shouldn't think, oh, it's so difficult. No, it's not so bad. <laughs> Why do you think it's so difficult? Certainly Krishna knows the troubles we're taking, the difficulties we're accepting. We should be determined to go on. So. Don't mind the difficulty. Actually, the difficulties are good for us because they make us more determined and more serious in our Krishna consciousness. If we get something too easy, we won't value it very much. Now, Putana, you know, she, she got... What did she get? She, you know, she, 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 you said it was so easy for her, but she suffered. She was screaming. She was suffering and she's known as a demon. Although she got special mercy from Krishna, you know, we don't glorify Putana. We call her a witch. She's a demon. So we don't want that kind of reputation. We want to be known as a devotee. One who is known as a devotee, that's glorious position. 
But if you're known as a demon, even if you go back to Godhead, it's not very good. I'm, I don't, oh, that's Putana, that woman over there is Putana. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't think she can have such a, although she's there in Goloka. <laughs> so we want, we want the position of Putana. Right? Hare Krishna, please. Yes? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, to become that great uh, demon, to be killed by Krishna, lots of austerities they might have done. Oh, yes. That's definitely... Otherwise, good... they will not be eligible to be killed by Krishna. Yes. Krishna so didn't... in that sense, if you think that we are nothing, we are not doing anything. Right. Krishna, just to get... Krishna didn't kill every demon. There was only certain demons, Krishna killed them. And Putana happened to be one. Yes. So that's a good point, Prabhu. So certain, we don't know everything about Putana's previous life. As you said, you know, we heard she was the daughter of Bali. So some bitterness there because she saw her father lose everything. At the same time, she was attracted to Vamana Dev. We don't know everything about her previous life, but just to get that body of Putana, to get those powers, and to take part in Lord Krishna's pastimes, to be killed by Krishna, very special. So, certainly not so easy. We're fortunate, we're the fortunate people, because we have the connection with the pure devotees, with the parampara. We have the Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Lord Chaitanya is Odarya, avatar, giving the greatest mercy. We have to take shelter of that mercy. So we have a lot of mercy, we have a lot of things going for us to help us to go back to Godhead. Wonderful pure devotees, like Srila Prabhupada, who came to begin the Krishna Consciousness Movement was for all of us, to give us a chance to serve Krishna. We have to take the opportunity, take it seriously. And then we can get everything. Certainly you, you can go to the spiritual world, you can be with Krishna. Thank you Srinivas Prabhu. Thank you. Yes. Any other question? Comment? Uh, Mar Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Maharaj, uh, Lord Krishna killed many demons in Vindavan. Uh, actually, uh, that demon, they are not ordinary uh, person. They are also uh, great, great uh, uh, saintly person, like, like Bhumasur uh, demon. And uh, in his previous life, he was a king and he left his kingdom and he went to forest to perform austerity. And uh, uh, during his austerity, uh, austerity time, he did not respect the uh, police station. Yes, and I'm audible, Morris? Yes. So uh, that uh, he did not uh, offer respect to police station and police station became angry and he cursed him. That's why uh, the king became a Maya Dhanava a son as a Bhumasa demon. And Lord Krishna uh, uh, killed him at uh, Kamagan forest and he was he got, uh, uh, liber he got liberated. So like this way, uh, they appeared in this uh, Brajabhumi to perform Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna uh, um, uh, delivered them like this way. Okay. And then, so you're saying about how they become great demons? Yes, Maharaj. Because Krishna uh, uh, cursed him to become a demon because his activities was like an angry mood and he did not uh, respect to the sadhus. Yes. Okay. Yes, we see also Vritasura. He got the body of a big demon and it was the curse of Parvati, but it was mercy, so he could go back to Godhead quicker. So sometimes it's arranged like that, that these souls, they take the body of demons, 
so that they can be killed by Krishna because it uses up all their last karma and then they can go back to Godhead. So even though they come as a demon, they're actually devotees in the spiritual world. And so we see this with Putana, that she's playing the part of a demon, but she's going to go back to God. She went back to Godhead to serve there. So it's not that she's always Putana. Putana was just her role in the material world, right? We shouldn't criticize her because of her part in the material world. We should think who she is in the spiritual world because that's her eternal Leela in the spiritual world. So she took the part, the position of a demon, just so she could finish off her karma and then she could go back to Godhead and serve Krishna eternally. Okay, thank you Prabhu. You know, before we stop, I'd like to ask everyone, do you want to change the time of the class? We were having it four o'clock, but tomorrow is the fasting for, and break the fast. We want to, fin maybe you want to break, do you want to bring it forward one hour? And we'll have class at Two three. Two hours before. Huh? Two hours before is good. Two hours before. That will be two o'clock. Two o'clock to 4.30. What, what do you say? I'll ask all the devotees, when do you want the class? Do you want two o'clock or three o'clock? Because people, not everyone's from so India, are they? <coughs> Sorry, Maharaj, three is fine. Two o'clock is, uh, we have some other engagements. Yes, I think so. Three, three means, sorry Maharaj, three means again up to 5.30 it goes. Yes, right. And then we can break it fast. You can take your prasadam. 5.30 is good. Gayatri. So, is, is that all right, Jalangi and all the other ladies? Are you okay with that? Yes. Morning stop. I prefer that time. Shall I tell your cook, Gurmaj? Who's, who's my cook? No, no, I will tell them. So, Maharaj, tomorrow what time shall we come? Three. Three o'clock, okay, Maharaj. Three o'clock, yeah. Okay, Maharaj. All right. Is that everyone still here? They didn't all leave the class? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we'll meet tomorrow, three o'clock, and we'll have the last class tomorrow. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbhai Krishna. Hare 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 Krishna